cheating fiancé raises the bar on cheating. Just recently, it was found that my now wife had cheated on me years before. Just after we were engaged, we went away for a weekend with some of our closest friends. It happened when we were together on a weekend away with our closest friends. When she cheated on me, the person with whom she had an affair was someone I would have considered a friend. Despite the fact that he didn't seem to be as attached to the group as the other 8-9 folks we were with at the time, I'd still consider him a friend on the surface. Furthermore, he is the brother of one of my wife's closest friends, who happened to be in town this weekend, as well as me. It was with some of our dearest friends that we traveled to Europe while we were in our late 20s. This was something that we did on a regular basis as a group. We'd been drinking and socializing throughout the day and early evening. When we returned to the campsite a few hours later, we realized we needed more supplies than we had brought with us from the campsite. I had intended to run to the store while my sober companion drove me there. Suddenly, just as we were about to leave, I received word that my fiancé had left the house with the issue in mind, seemingly sneaking off, when there was no reason for being secretive, unless I was advised that he was supposedly sober and safe to drive to the store, and that she wanted cigarettes, she wasn't a smoker, although she did use on occasion when intoxicated at the time. I agreed to go with them. This caused me to get the most unpleasant feeling of uneasiness as soon as I heard the words. In addition to the circumstances, there is a profound intuitive gut instinct that guides her decisions. I've never been someone who was extremely insecure, jealous, or dominant. Despite the fact that I'm sure things have changed on some levels since then, I contacted her to make sure they had ice on hand in addition to whatever else they were going to receive in the mail. There was no answer to my question. I attempted to contact him through phone, but received no response. Other friends attempted to call them to inform them that they needed to get bags of ice, but they did not answer. By then, it was clear that I wasn't the only one who suspected a problem. Disquiet could be seen on her and my friend's expressions after many attempts to contact each of them had failed. The fact that everyone knew and slash or saw what was going on in my thoughts I assume was the cause of their scurrying away. The realization that I was not the only one making connections in this place was unacceptable. Some of the links were coincidental, while others were driven solely by institutional imperatives and were much too crucial to be ignored. I distinctly remember dialing her phone 20-30 more times and walking around the side of the house where we were staying like a effing madman as she answered the phone. It seemed like I went from having a lovely time with my closest friends to living in a horrific dream with nothing to base my choices on other than unanswered phone calls, institutions, and the looks on the faces of a couple of our friends when their phone calls were also ignored. She'd been gone for more over an hour at this point. The business is just around 10 minutes away on foot. Again, this occurred years ago. I was just made painfully aware that she did, in fact, cheat that night which she affirmed by stating so but then playing dumb on the facts and fumbling on the excuses for why those information are too foggy to reveal. While it indicates a lot about her character, or lack thereof, it seems fair to conclude that my receiving it and not walking away that night, I likely only enhanced her resolve to dishonesty. When she returned, I confronted her, he discreetly dropped her off, and went so she wouldn't have to face me the rest of us after what they had just done. After failing to communicate that night, I retreated inside my thoughts and consumed massive quantities of whiskey and THC in an attempt to alleviate this terrible sensation. I'll never forget waking up the following morning with her next to me, understanding it wasn't all a horrible dream. If my suspicions are correct, this lady is the world's most sociopathic ever, doing what I believe she did and then laying in bed next to me the same night. Even though I put myself into denial, I always knew something horrible had happened, but I shut it off in my head probably as a weak protection mechanism. We had such a lengthy and deep connection at the time, eight years, six years living together, just engaged, that she slept next to me in bed hours later. I couldn't get my brain around the idea that she was capable of doing anything that outlandish, so I convinced myself that the reason it appeared so incredibly unintelligible and messed up was because it was all in my imagination. I gradually convinced myself that I had recalled it, exaggerated version of events for whatever reason, but in the days and weeks that followed, I continued contacting her about it. I was told it was incorrect, that I was insane for even considering it. That was the story from the minute she returned after betraying me so shamelessly until days ago, when it rose to the surface, to the point where I was informed I am a crazy for making such claims. She even brought it up while we were hanging out with her friend his sister, saying, 
Can you believe he thinks I'd genuinely do anything like that, come on. I'll never forget how he used his sister as a pawn to conceal her conduct from me and persuade me I was insane. She kept it a secret from her friend until I found out for sure. If I were this buddy, she'd be dead to me. He avoided me like the plague after that, and I told myself that it was because he had heard of my suspicions and, being innocent, he didn't want to become involved. He told his pals that he was afraid of me, should have seen it for what it was. I'm curious as to why. It's worth emphasizing that this person was conceited and a well-known womanizing narcissist. He even boasted about prostitutes and having a high-priced coke habit. While sharing this will almost certainly make me look even more insane for not running as far away from her as I could that night, even though I was there for it. It seems fictional when I write it down. This dirtbag even bragged to all of the guys when we were busting his balls hours before that he is in fact such a legit that he is likely littered with STD and slash or HIV from all of the unprotected he had. This is the real kicker. We joked about his remark with my fiancé and his sister that day, so she was completely aware of what he said yet chose to cheat on me with him. The specifics of how far it progressed are unknown. There was no intercourse, according to her and another individual with whom he related the account. But, although it's fair to say I'm an idiot, I'm not dumb enough to tolerate anything less than they're engaging in the most disgusting and humiliating types of unprotected. It would be absurd to suppose she couldn't accomplish it all if she was capable of achieving what she did. This piece of human garbage is one of those stereotypical d-bags that personifies the caricature of an arrogant misogamist who believes his money elevates him above all others. His funders are rather immaterial in this context, since I did do well myself. I can't understand how someone who could do something like this could do it now that I've been forced to confront it. Just days after saying yes to their fiancé, seven years of cohabitation, and be able to go on in a marriage while still looking me in the eyes and holding this secret. Not to mention God knows how many other terrible secrets. I can't think of any reasons to defend the idea that she isn't slash, wasn't or will never be capable of being unfaithful in the past, present or future. My denial enabled her to sweep it under the rug, and she slept well as a result. It frightens me. I don't know how to absorb this stuff if a fiancé can cheat while spending a weekend away with close friends and do it in such a casual and reckless manner that everyone there is uncomfortable forced to see these red flags. All of the characteristics I believed characterized a strong-willed person were, in fact, features of someone who does whatever they want, whenever they want with little regard for the effect on others particularly when we were in our 20s and alcohol was involved, not talking whenever she did anything I didn't think was okay, or even when I thought something was wrong. Merely for adultery, she just denied it, and when denying doesn't work due to witnesses and collateral damage, she just calls me crazy and buries the memory till, in some situations, she has persuaded herself she didn't do anything wrong. For a long period I suffered with despair and the effects of gaslighting. I. 